This is the Blockade Pinball Podcast. I'm your host, Chris Freebus, a.k.a. Shut Your Trap. Joining me as always, halfway across the world, is Jared Morgan. Hello, everyone. How are you going? Jared, why is it that uh, uh, our daylight saving time switching arounds aren't the same? <laughs> because Queensland doesn't do daylight savings. Because apparently it fades the curtains and it disrupts the cows. So... So we don't do daylight saving, even though the rest of the eastern seaboard of Australia does. So, yeah, uh, yeah, it I'm, sucks. I, I'm I'm waiting for uh, California. We voted to quit with going back to standard time and just stick with daylight saving time. And oh, yeah. I th I, at least I think that's what it was. Um, yeah, because that would give us the longer nights, or I mean, the longer days during the summer. Mm. But anyway, um, but for some reason, there's some holdup that's not letting us switch over even though we all said, yay. So politics is what it is. Yeah, probably on a federal level. <laughs> probably. Yeah. Oh, well. So your, your curtains will fade as well. That's the reason. That's the actual reason. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I'm sitting here, you know, prepping for the show and all of a sudden Jared's like, um, am I early? <laughs> and I'm like, <laughs> what? Oh, I crap. No oh. Idea. <laughs> Cause you know, we rely so heavily on, on actual, you know, your phones and all that sort of stuff for your time. And, and when they start to screw up, you literally go, literally, uh, what day is it? What time is it? Right. You, I, it's really tough. And I, I should have remembered that I actually got an analog clock downstairs in the room. It's almost like the uh, the, the redundancy clock, just in case something goes weird. Um, and I should have just looked at that and that would have told me the time. But then, you know, everything was sort of all the, there's a particular like news show that comes on at a certain time of the day. And when I got up, it was still Rage, which is a music program, a little bit like MTV, but locally produced here. And it was still running. I was going, that's odd. It shouldn't be running. And then <laughs> I looked at my clock. I went, hang on. I'm just, it's not even seven o'clock yet. And I, I was expecting to be, oh, yeah, I need to go upstairs now and actually see if Chris is around. But no. Nah. No, I was, was going to say, this, this is the good one where you can go ahead and you're not, oh, crap, I'm an hour behind. Instead of, yeah. oh, I'm early. So <laughs> I'm early. I can, I don't know. <laughs> well, what I was going to do is, you know, catch up on last show's post production because I haven't done it yet. It's been two weeks. <laughs> so I, need to, I know I need to get the, I need to get the episode out, but I got, I've got a good reason to do it. I'm still doing a whole lot of stuff around the house. So um, the the evenings and spare time is like literally getting the garage set up and you know um, putting shelving together and stuff. So it's all all systems go here in Studio North Lakes. But yeah, I should, I should point out Jared is uh, diving into one of his uh, machines again uh, to to fix it up and is finding all sorts of uh, interesting things like somebody in floor installing a fluorescent tube in the back box rather than <laughs> putting incandescent lights back in it. <laughs> Oh, yeah, yeah. It's, and someone had put a fluorescent ballast in the back. I actually got the thing open. I had to drill the lock because it was the, the key wasn't working. So I drilled the lock to get into the back box so I could get the back glass off. Um, and, yeah, it's got a fluoro tube in it, which is good because this era of, of Gottlieb's, the sort of 80s um, era of Gottlieb's, suffered terribly from heat in the back box. So this person putting a fluoro tube in the back of the um, back box has saved this back glass. It's actually the best out of all three, so I'm happy with the dodgy hack that this person's done. <laughs> it's it's literally paid benefit. And now I should what I should really do is go and clear coat that back glass. To oh yeah, in. put the uh, put the triple thick on. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I, I so going so through. here's the the question though: Are you going to stick with that tube, or are you going to LED out the back box so that uh, it'll stay cool that way? LED it. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> there's no way I'm giving that thing in there. Number one, it doesn't work. So oh, well, that the, is the, an issue. The fluoro yeah. tube is is gone, and they've. I, I'm going to have to unwire it from however they have put it in. It's probably going to be a total hack, like all these um, African pins are. Um, but the <laughs> upside is, in one of the ones, I found twenty five dollars, Zimbabwean dollars, <laughs> so twenty five cents. I was going to say it's like finding pesos here. <laughs> it, pretty much, yep. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, twenty five cents. Hey, look, it's enough for one American play of pinball machine on an old one. There you go. So there you go. <laughs> uh, speaking of hacks, uh, last time we made mention that there was a oops arcade one up uh, when they did their firmware or patch for Marvel. 
wound up uh, to those that were in the know and knowing how to do, being able to put the Marvel and Star Wars tables also onto their machine and vice versa. And apparently Arcade 1-Up went, hey, we didn't mean that and has pulled <laughs> the, the patch now. All of the images are now gone, I think, except for the Attack from Mars one. Right. Uh, then it's because, and uh, apparently this is a thing that Arcade1UP does, um, They, when, when you do an update of your um, machine, it's always with a full image. It's not a patch. Oh. So, so they give you literally the entire ISO of the the system and of course you can go it's common hardware so you can just go and load it there's no checksum or anything like that that seems to happen it's just this hardware takes this type of image if you load this image on correctly it will work so so here's what yeah. i'm curious about <laughs> does this mean when mel was first showing off the unit that he had at his house and he mm. had all 30 tables available to him and we were like oh is he having to swap out the boards and i'm wondering was he having to swap out the boards or is this exactly what he had installed yeah no i don't think he was swapping out the boards i think he had all three isos installed yeah um and he was just running them like a like three different apps off an android which, which means which is... our kid one of kind of was well aware of this I in advance <laughs> yeah i would have thought like this should not have been a surprise like they should have, if they were really hardcore about this, they should have put better protections into the hardware to stop them from loading a uh, like a a non-compliant ROM, like, right? You know, one that wasn't meant for that cabinet, right? Um, because you can imagine that in Marvel and Star Wars and Lucasfilm and you know Disney probably aren't really happy having their software on <laughs> on a cabinet with you know. Um, well, Martians on it, or no? Honestly, I think it's versa. less about that and more about the fact that they're like, uh, "That's lost revenue to us that you would owe." Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, there's a lot of reasons, probably, why they would have to uh, withdraw those images from yes. the uh, from the market. But you know, um, you can pretty much bet someone's already put that up on Usenet or Torrents. <laughs> so if you want it, well, as with all things, yeah. All right, there's no such thing as once it's on the internet, it's available. For forever yeah <laughs> so that's yeah. what you gotta be if, aware kids, of kids if you haven't learned that lesson yet um well, you let uncle jared and and uncle chris tell you Ooh, don't make it creepy <laughs> um, <laughs> okay we're gonna dive right into the uh, to the action here so uh the pinball show just dropped uh what was it episode eight uh yeah episode mm. eight uh this last week uh it was very heavy on pinball fx news uh, mm. They had Mel in the studio to deliver the news, and uh, Mel in his fancy new haircut. Um, yeah, slick ass. Yeah, and uh, well, we'll just dive right into the the inevitable, which you've already guessed by the title of this show, which is Pinball Effects is delayed. Mm. Mm. Significantly delayed. Significantly. And before you start wondering... Uh, or, or laughing, going, I knew this was going to happen. You probably, okay, fine. Maybe you took the guess. But did you know why this was happening? Mm. That's the better question. So Mel kind of uh, illuminated this. So basically, uh, Pinball Effects delayed until, uh, he said March, probably, <laughs> of 2022. Yeah. And that that will be an early access version. Um, now, the steam is... For, oh, no, no not for gamers. steamers. Epic gamers. Um, epic gamers. Yeah. I'm curious. With early access, uh, does that mean though they're charging you still full price? Oh, uh, yeah, it's going to be interesting to see how they make um, in-app purchases work. I would think that they will let you buy the content. So I'm then... guessing you're buying the content with the understanding that you're essentially buying uh, a beta version of the game. I think so, which is, you know, I think a lot of people, it, is, it would be, I'm sure Epic has a similar thing to early access like they do on Steam. So yeah. it's probably like, okay, here's a game. Uh, it, it is early access with all the conditions that go with along with an early access game. Things could be broken, you know, you could right. lose everything, you know, from a progress perspective, your results may vary. Um, you know, so 
I think it'll be like a full game. You'll be able to buy the entitlements. Those entitlements will work when the game is fully released. Yeah. But it'll just be um, available early so you can get feedback, Yeah, I would think. So uh, reasons that he said for the delay. Uh, reason number one, Star Wars VR. Mm. Okay. Reason number it took two. Them longer than they thought. Yeah. Uh, reason number two, Zen Pinball Party. Yeah, because they did release a full game with four brand new tables. Um, yeah. But the more interesting aspect is that because all of these were created in Unreal Engine, so new tech, plus they yeah. brought in new people, yeah. to which then Mel was saying that with and this is the case with any design studio, uh, yeah. you've got to now get your workflow going to understanding the new tech, plus bringing in the new people and having them understand your processes and your tool sets, so your your core team is basically training the new people rather yeah. than actually working on content. Um, and so basically it's take a step backward so that you can actually take those two steps forward. Oh yeah, absolutely. You go into you go into negative production when you're actually onboarding anyone new. It's just like you know, training someone up. Someone's right. gonna do it and that person is effectively unavailable to do work right while they're onboarding people so, so no it's not a matter of zen is going into debt for this or uh as somebody was speculating oh my gosh they're they're losing money no they're not losing money they're investing into themselves to get mm. better output later and we'll talk about what the better output is later is uh a little bit from to, here you have to realize too like on the whole zen is losing money thing yeah, pretty sure their agreement with Epic Games is probably preventing that from happening. Right. <laughs> uh, so I think we're safe there. I think Epic Games has got this for them. Uh, and I mean, uh, which just, is I, why it's exclusive. Yeah, there, there was there was a this this conversation keeps on cropping up with people doing the da ah, Epic Games. Why would Zen turn their backs on their customers? Why are they doing this? You know, blah 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 blah. Well, here's the thing. They're essentially an investor. They're an investor, they but are. but here's the point. If you were already going to be spending X amount of dollars on development of your game, and then somebody comes in and says, hey, here's a whole bunch of money. Mm. Just to stacked. have it on our store, For which the majority of your customers totally have access to, other than your, your Apple customers, who, I'm sorry, you're still paying pinball effects too, so... You know yeah. what? You're not really the customer that <laughs> that you think you are. Pretty much. Um, but uh, I defy anybody out there to tell me that you wouldn't take that. It, it's kind of like, are you telling me that you don't use coupons when they're available to me? You know, to you? Do you not shop around for the best price? What? Do you actually walk onto a car lot and pay the sticker price? You're no. Mad if you, if, do. <laughs> you know, you're gonna go where the bargain is and save. I yourself never pay retail. No. I always ask for a discount. Right. Always. And so you got to believe that as yeah. a business and a game developer, you're going to apply that same logic. And if it's uh -huh. not going to, again, it's, if you own a PC, you can download Epic Game Store. Mm -hmm. It's not like, oh, but my PC only runs Steam. That's not the no, case. No, no. You can it's... download Epic Game Store still. You're not being excluded. Yes, it is exclusive to that store, and yes, I understand, oh, but I don't want to have two different storefronts. I get that completely. You'd rather have it in Steam. But I'm also going to say, you're going to be waiting a long time. <laughs> yeah, so it's a trade-off. You can, you can wait. You can, you can say, no, I want to wait until this is Steam. It's that important to me. And there's, there's, I want to wait. Yeah, and there's still no guarantee because, uh, as far as I know... Uh, Tony Hawk Pro Skater 1 and 2 remaster that got put out on Epic Game Store a year ago. Still mm. not available on Steam. I think that there it sounds like Zen has a very clear deal. I think you can you can pretty much say that it's going to be a year from March next year. But probably. Well, we'll probably <laughs> actually not. I think it's going to be a year from the actual drop date of the official non That's what I'm thinking. Version. That's what I'm thinking. So is that June? Well, okay, so there's where we're, we're going to jump around here a little bit. Uh, yeah, mm. so basically what Mel said was early access is aiming at March. Mm. Depending on how well that does, in other words, 
if they've hit the mark right off the bat and there's very few issues that we gamers find, then the game will be released a little bit sooner. If there's a lot of issues that need to be addressing, then the game releases a little bit later. Uh, they are targeting summer for console and full PC release. So summer is... June, July, June, August. July. Yeah. Yeah, when they said summer in the thing, I, I originally went, hang on, October next year? Because I was thinking of Australia. Oh, yeah, summer. your summer. Yeah, your summer. Thing. Yeah. They, so. they really, like when they're dealing with international audiences, they, they've got to use dates because seasons mean nothing. <laughs> uh, like they just use dates, guys, please. Eh, you like, southern hemispheres. Uh <laughs> <laughs> You cause all sorts of problems. Uh, yeah, so that's that's yeah, gonna be the target. Fault. That's gonna be the target date. Uh, okay, so let's talk about the early access. Uh, why it's important. Um, we're gonna kind of we're gonna speculate a bit here. We're gonna read the tea leaves. Uh, the first thing Mel said was it the game is super network heavy. So what does that mean to you, Jared? Mm. Super network heavy. It sounds like that. When I say network heavy, it's going to have a lot of demands on n not your PC, although I think you need a pretty grunty one to run it, but it's going to have a lot of data being transferred. And I have a feeling that network heavy means that there's going to be a lot of um, data transmitted when you're doing online play and playing with others. So I that, that says a number of things to me. It says that if there's any multiplayer aspects in the game, those multiplayer aspects are actually going to be almost streamed gameplay that you're interacting with. Right. Rather than just a score pop up. So that's interesting. Yeah, I, I agree. I think that the, what they're not, uh, what he's subtly not saying directly is yeah, you're going to be doing a lot of interacting with other players. Yeah. Um, and it's going to be in real time. Yeah. Uh, as well. So real-time head-to-head play, I think, is something you can derive from what you were saying there. Yeah. Uh, why only PC for the early access? Well, as he so eloquently stated there, it's a lot easier to troubleshoot one platform than a whole bunch of platforms. <laughs> but also, too, do consoles even offer an early access stream? No, not necessarily. No. And, that's the, and, and consoles, you know, again, we've talked about this way back with Farsight. Every time you wanted to do a patch, uh, like a large patch, uh, you have to resubmit the game. And now yeah. you're, you're, so it's not just resubmitting to fix your issues, but then the console uh, storefronts have to, you have to run through a whole bunch of checklists of their own to make sure that it, may, you know, it meets every yeah, single time. Absolutely. So it's not just like PC, they can upload the, the change and it's there as soon as they push the go button. Yeah, with two console. hours or something yeah across yeah. the entire world basically mm -hmm, it, mm -hmm. it propagates whereas consoles it's push the button and wait six weeks <laughs> yeah while so. sony and microsoft go through their extensive checklist so you're not yeah. releasing junk onto their marketplace basically. yeah or, you know and making sure that you can play the game with a guitar hero controller like xbox did to farsight um <laughs> they did oh you don't so know you that story they played the game with a Xbox with a Guitar Heroes controller. Microsoft had a thing that said that all games must be playable with all controllers. I believe it was something of that nature. <laughs> That's ridiculous, right? So <laughs> Farsight submitted, and they got the rejection. And they were like, "Why did we get rejected?" And it was, "Well, your game did not play while using a Guitar Hero controller." Then <laughs> they went, "You what?" <laughs> and it was like, it's not supposed to. But because Guitar Hero Controller used the same, uh, you know, the, each button corresponded to a joypad yeah. button. Or joypad, I don't even know what the Xbox controller called theirs. The, you know, the controller. Um, but for some reason, Farsights didn't communicate in that same manner, and so therefore the game didn't play. And so they got rejected. This was on Xbox 360, by the way. So this is back when, if you all are wondering why 360 just got shafted, it's because That's Microsoft kept on coming up with BS reasons and it was costing them like $50,000 a submission. So Ooh, yeah, that was expensive. It was just stupid. Yeah. Um, yeah. Anyway, but yeah, it's easier to troubleshoot on one, <laughs> on one grouping. And if you can get one thing right 
And then you start opening it up to others. Then if you have other issues, you're like, well, it worked over here. Why is it not working over here? And then you can solve that problem rather than going, it's not working. We don't know what the Everywhere. Problem. Everywhere. For many yeah. different reasons. It could be anything. <laughs> <laughs> um, another reason uh, for, or that they want this early access. Uh, so Pin by Royale. Uh, apparently they're on their fourth. He didn't call it rebuild, but he called it overhaul. <laughs> Sounds like their fourth iteration yeah. of the the game. So, and basically, what it's coming down to is, uh, as they're running it and using Unreal and discovering things with Unreal, uh, it's kind of opening up new possibilities, and mm. uh, you know they're figuring out what they can and cannot do. In a lot of cases, they're finding out that they can do a lot more than they expected. And so because they can do more than they can expect, they're kind of adding in. But it sounds like it's going to look a lot less like Tetris 99, which was their kind of uh, target look, I guess, or, yeah. or functionality. And it seems like they're turning it into a Zen product <laughs> instead of a copycat. Yeah. So on the, on the note of, you know, uh, like a Tetris 99 experience, I would imagine their claims of it being rather network heavy being quite true. Yeah. If they were doing in the Tetris 99 experience, because that thing's like bringing 99 views of play fields or like 99 views of game fields into your, your view. So yeah, yeah that would be a problem. But um, he did say that he, they had a preview build of Pinball Royale going that they showed uh, licensors and immediately they had a licensor attach themselves to Pinball Royale. So mm. that's pretty interesting that if you can just show it and somebody go, yep, we're in. <laughs> yep, shut up and take my money. Here we go. <laughs> um, so that's kind yeah, of that's, that's kind good. of interesting. Uh, at first, Mel said that there was other things that were going to be secret. And then about a few sentences later, he spilled that. Well, I mean, it's not spilled. We kind of already knew this. But um, there's the new clan system that they need to be mm. checking out uh, with the early access, which... I know you and me both have been just like clan pinball blockade. Um, yes. So yeah, we're going to be doing this. It might only be us playing in it, but <laughs> it's okay. It's our clan, man. right? Um, yeah. We're gonna have to. We're gonna have to draft a couple of these players. Uh, yeah. But uh, that obviously is going to be network heavy. Also, if you're doing oh, yeah. a clan system. For uh, sure. yeah. And then they also mentioned tournaments, um, which of course, depending on what the tournament aspect is um, again I'm hoping that they've evolved a little bit from what is currently in FX3 uh, but yeah, I have a feeling it's going to be fairly funky. similar uh, I reckon they've learned a fair bit from FX3 they, the community they know what the community expects from a tournament experience yeah. and I have a feeling that it's going to be pretty rich and I hope that you know, because I mean, they even gave a shout out to Cons Gang. Uh, yeah, I really hope that they're paying attention to what some of these people have been doing. That basically is a side project to running a tournament using FX3 and do some integration so that you can actually run a true and proper tournament that lasts weeks over multiple tables and having uh, Zen keep track of all the data. Basically. Oh yeah, I I think that I think we had mel on ages ago when we were talking about you know or oh, would you improve tournaments in fx3 and he went into detail about what they learned and you know what they will be changing if they actually do a, a tournament relay uh, and actually redo it so you can pretty much expect just go back to that interview that we did um a while back and <laughs> which one would that, that be jared <laughs> Oh, one of the ones that's identified on blackadepinball.com forward slash, not forward slash episodes, but if you go and filter on interviews on our website, there will all the Mel interviews will come up and you should be able to review the show notes and work out what that is. Or you can also uh, uh, go on to YouTube and go to our playlists on our channel mm. and all the Mel interviews are uh, in a playlist. That's right. Okay. It's easy for you to do interviews because they're one of the most popular things we have in the on the site. Yep. Okay. So, so speaking of, uh, consoles, 
Mm. Uh, they're also going to be taking, they, they basically heard everybody, but I also think they saw sales figures and the fact that nobody can get their hands on a PS5 or Xbox Series X. And uh, they're also going to be launching for PS4 and Xbox. Which is good. Yeah. That's a huge market. Huge market. Yes. So I'm sure that'll make a move. lot of people happy there. Um, mm-hmm. However, folks, I'm just going to say it right now. You better start asking that question of, so when I upgrade to one of those new consoles, is everything going to carry over? Hmm. I mean, what? Is, is there an upgrade path from four to five? That's what is I'm it, saying. Is it guaranteed? I don't know. I'm, I'm not a console player, so I can't tell you. Yeah. But um, it's not a requirement, from what I understand. For right. To so that's what I'm saying. You. Be- before you start trumpeting and being like, yeah. Um, just be aware that that might still be an issue. Uh, it's certainly a question that we will, whenever we get to talk to Mel again, that we'll bring up. But until yeah, then, maybe the maybe hop on the Reddit and on the Twitter and be asking those questions and you know in the Discord and see if you get a response. Mm. Uh, but again, That's yeah. So question. summer summer twenty twenty two for all the consoles is the targeted date for the full launch of Pinball Effects. Mm. And <laughs> as much as Bobby seemed to be like, oh, that's not far away. Yeah, that's a far ways. <laughs> that's a fairly... That's, eh, a, that's fairly a long time. That's a fairly non-scripted far away time. Uh, considering uh, how long we've been waiting. So like Mel said, this got announced back in January yeah. of 2021. So you're talking about a year and a half from announcement to launch. That's significantly would be the longer. longest, the longest time that Zen has ever announced something and then planned to ship it. Yeah, by far, I, in the history of Zen, I would think. Uh, <laughs> so, so that's interesting. Um, Mel then went on to talk a little bit about uh, just with Unreal Engine. He says at this point, all the uh, pinball team are up to speed on it mm. and are you know. Uh, Firing uh, on all cylinders in that way. So I, I think basically that means they're not training anymore. Now they're actually building and being functional. That's right. Uh, and one of the things that is discovered during this time was that, hey, they can do full HD video now. <laughs> oh, hey, about time, right? Mm. Like we've been banging on about for the last how long? Yeah, uh, full Still HD video for which Mel then said, you know, we can have movie footage playing in it, to which immediately my bell started ringing. And I kind of went, so you've got new licensors that you're attaching to. Uh, obviously, there's been no mention of Jersey Jack or Stern, but yeah, just new licenses. And if we're talking about movie clips and stuff, and I'm wondering, are we moving beyond Star Wars? Mm. and maybe getting some new current licenses <laughs> or something like yeah. that of that nature to throw in here? Well, it could very well be the case. I mean, we there's if they're getting studio involvement and they're actually getting the ability to reuse clips, then that pretty much blows open the landscape for what could possibly come into the platform over right. time. Right. It really is open ended. Like, yeah, yeah. Uh, they so. they also they took that opportunity to highlight uh, their new designer. Uh, they're touting as the first p- uh, female pinball designer, basically in the all of pinball the history. Of history. Of pinball. <laughs> yeah, as like far real, as as far as professional digital. companies go, uh, yeah. not uh, visual effects. Um, yeah, designers. Uh, Anna Langell, I'm guessing, is how we pronounce her name. Um, I think so. She was the uh, designer on Trolls, and she is also the co-designer on Curse of the Mummy, which is the third of the Zen Originals. We're going to show you a little bit of uh, just what the play field of that looks like in a moment here. Mm. Um, But it was during that process that she also mentions that she's kind of taken the lead on working out this HD video uh, display. Yep. And it kind of makes me wonder, so are we going to be seeing this only on Curse of the Mummy, or are we going to see it on the other two Zen Originals? Uh, I think I th- Noir already has some DMD running. I think we I saw footage think... with that. So that's probably not going to be the case there. 
I reckon, given the amount of lead time they're giving themselves, I think they will probably retrofit. You think they'll revamp? It would make sense to revamp. For for the brand new Zen originals that are like FX exclusive, um, not the what they call the legacy tables that they're referring yeah. to now. Like they they will remain just regular DMD, but the new ones, I think they will all make those um, HD video. Because the thing is that all of the assets that they've got, they have to downsample to DMD anyhow from HD. Mm-hmm. So why would they just not downsample them and right. put them in, right? So yeah. I'm pretty sure you'll you'll see all three with an HD display, which is well and truly about time. And hopefully, they don't go the route of of Magic Pixel and just mm. do kind of a lame. I don't think so. Barely any info, no no cool animations or footage going on there. Um, I mean, imagine if you were playing Castle Storm, and there was gameplay footage from Castle Storm on your DMD. That would be cool as opposed to just some, you know, interesting fonts and whatever, you know, I, I, I'm hoping that that there's where Zen's internals and doing animation, CG animation, that's going to be outside the pinball department, obviously for that, um, Mm. comes into effect and and goes, but let's just show you a quick, uh, glance at what the curse of the mummy play field looks like. There we go. Lighting looks good. eh? Yeah, lighting does look pretty good. So, uh, a little bit dark. I had a better image and I can't find it, um, yeah, but that's yeah. okay. Uh, looks like what we have here, uh, just kind of some looping around ramp action. Uh, but there's this ramp way up over here that goes all the way up to this, these upper play fields. And there are yeah. these two little mini play fields. I'm going to say this now. In general, I'm not a fan of mini play fields. You don't like them? I don't. It, it, it it's a gimmick to me, I don't and, and it doesn't matter. I, and I'm not talking about just in Zen Originals either, or Zachariah. I'm talking about even on real machines. Um, I am not a fan of Black Knight and Black Knight 2000 because, the, and that's not even a mini playfield per se because that's got a full size flipper. But I'm I don't care for little tiny playfields to bat the ball around it. it there's too much velocity on the ball, and it's too much of just like twitch reaction to, to keep it in play, and it, that's not what I enjoy about pinball. It it is if the if they don't down power the flipper coils. So the idea with a mini play field done well is that um, the they make the coils weaker up the top, so it doesn't feel like you're just bashing the ball around at lightning speed. Yeah. So if they do that. Um, that's good. Now they've yeah. done that on, um, to an extent, on Mandalorian, where the flipper will actually weaken in strength um, as you go up to, into the up the the more advanced levels of the mini playfield game. Okay. And in on the pro model, it actually emulates the playfield tilting because that okay. mini playfield actually is on a pitch. Right. So it, it, for that reason, it works well on the on the pro, um, but. In the case of Black Knight 2000 and and Black Knight Swords of Rage, I think they've they've done a good job on those mini play fields up there. I think there's no like when I'm playing Black Knight 2000, I don't really feel like the ball is super uncontrollable up there. Um, I just, I mean, I'm know. even thinking of Game of Thrones. It just that little yeah, section. Yeah, I didn't get to play that ever. I've never played that game. It, it does nothing for me. Yeah, it just, I think it, some it's such work a gimmick better than others. Probably, um, ACDC the lower play fields. I kind of feel the same way about lower play fields. Oh, that, to be honest. that is a waste of time. That right? thing is a waste of time. And that's yeah. what, and I guess that's what it is. It, it always just feels just kind of like a oh wow, look at this, rather than hey, isn't this fun to play? So mm-hmm. I don't know. I mean, you know, jury's out, but I'm just saying I'm not. Well, what about black uh, black holes mini play field? Like that's fun uh, to play. Black holes is okay. Haunted houses is terrible. Uh. <laughs> so, I mean, that's how I feel. Even though they're kind of similar, but anyway, that's enough of my bias. Uh, <laughs> hey, yeah, look, right. there's the video uh, placeholder, and we're gonna call it a placeholder because Anna called it a placeholder, and she even said, "Please, somebody else, uh, you know, 
take help care of replace the, my yes. by default art because yes. it's no good. So yeah. I don't. I'm hoping that it's not just this score is always here and instruction is always here and then some kind of animatic going here. No, if you're going to do this thing animated, do like what Stern does, do like what Jersey Jacks does, and it's just constantly big and changing and you know flipping over and and doing interesting yep. things. Um, that's How good I'm, would that be though? In cabinet mode, right? That's going to make a lot of cabinet builders have to rethink the way they do their cabinet modes because they won't be allowing for an HD screen. Well, there. and there we go. There's a uh, Gen two of Arcade One Up. <laughs> Potentially, yeah. Too. I don't think it's going to be running on Android though, uh, right? <laughs> um, um, so anyway, I just want to kind of uh, uh, show that off uh, so you guys can it's see cool. what that looked like. Um, mm. So good job, Anna. Welcome to the team. She says she's yeah. been there about a year and a half. She'd been there for about a month um, working on Castle Storm 2 on the yes. uh, balances. Balances, and yeah. then essentially requested a, uh, a, a transfer. transfer and went to the yeah. Bimble department. Um, yeah. And uh, regarding uh, Mummy or, or Curse of the Mummy, uh, it's deep. Basically, designed it. He did all the paperwork, <laughs> mm, yeah. she, or she called it the office work, I think. And then yeah. uh, she executed. Uh, so it is a true. In that respect, it is a it is a true joint design because there's a lot of things that you have to translate from the paper to make actually function. Yeah, in a three D space. So you know that's that's kind of in a lot of ways how real pinball design works as well. Yeah. So you've got multiple people doing like the actual game concept and then you've got people doing the rules and you've got people doing all the different aspects of it. And it is really a team effort to do it. So I think Zen, it seems up until now, has had one designer doing the rules, doing the play field. So maybe actually having essentially someone else looking over the shoulder of the other person is actually going to result in in a better gameplay experience here yeah. as well. So, and this just goes to I further think... show that uh, you know Deep obviously he's now head of the department and probably yes overseeing things rather than doing the all the designing of a you know from start to finish on a game himself. He's very much the the, the George Gomez of yeah. of Zen Studios. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's see where else what else did the oh was it, Mel says there's going to be other new tech revealed with Unreal Engine I'm sure again as they do as they play around with it and and learn what it's capable of I'm sure we'll see these improvements um, yeah pop you can up. already see they've it seems like they've really bumped the lighting right up a lot so that's only the beginning if this is iteration one of that just imagine what they can do once they get really accustomed to the engine and you got to again think about terrible. Unreal. It's making the game more efficient, uh, yeah. In terms of how they render things out. Um, that's right. Because it's a framework. Like, yeah. Unreal is a framework that you can just plug into rather than having to, in the case of the PX engine, do it all yourself. So. And when you think about the fact that huge. Unreal Engine Five is what is doing all the visuals uh, for the Mandalorian for their giant screens when they're, you know, filming in their, when they're on set, when yeah. they're on set, that's running Unreal Engine five real time. <laughs> so kind uh, of incredible, isn't it? Yeah. Like, kind of incredible. Uh, now this is obviously they're doing Unreal four for, for this currently, uh, with pinball but, effects, uh, Unreal but five is around the corner. Yeah. But right. again, can you imagine if you were in house trying to develop that and playing catch up to unreal? No way. No. Yeah. So no. the game, I that's what I'm thinking. The game, he even Mel even said that like with the video screen, that was impossible in their PSX engine. Yeah, the PX engine just could not or do PX video engine, like yeah. that. Yeah, yeah, it so. couldn't push the pixels. Nope. Uh, speaking of, obviously we mentioned Curse of the Mummy. That's the third table um, mm. of the Zen originals. So there's Curse of the Mummy. There's Pinball Noir. And then there's uh, the now officially named Sky Pirates, which I think a lot of people said Sky Pirates. But the mm. winner obviously threw in the colon and put Treasure of the Clouds. So that's what's officially known as Sky Pirates Treasure of the Clouds. 
Yes. Um, and I believe, uh, what was the name Captain of Captain Ronnie? Captain Ronnie. Captain Ronnie. Captain Ronnie. Yeah. So that'll be. Yeah. That'll be that. So congratulations to uh, Ronnie, whoever you are. <laughs> yeah. You're the captain now. You're the captain now. <laughs> um, speaking of original designs, though, so Mel basically it seems like they want to get back. Like these three tables really inspired them to get back to basics. Um, mm. Really dive into mm. design originals once more, which again makes a lot of sense because, and well, we'll go mm. into it. But he says that uh, the goal is to always have at least one Zen original in development, actively in development. Yeah, uh, that these three tables inspire them to go back to their roots, which, well, yeah, for many years they were just doing nothing but originals. They were originals only. Yeah, there was yeah. no licensing necessarily. Um, and that one of the problems with when you are doing licensed, even you know licensed originals like what they did just did with these four tables, um, you're bound by the licensor creating certain rules. Um, yeah, and I think Stern has witnessed that a lot. Where, again, Game of Thrones, if you ever question the artwork, the art package, what was happening in the game, you can thank HBO for that. Um, mm -hmm. That wasn't necessarily. Stern making those choices as opposed to, and I'm trying to think which it was a fairly recent Stern title. And it's escaping me. Maybe, you know, it, Jared, where they were like, Oh my God, we had like just whatever we wanted. And they were like, yeah, yeah, that's cool. Go for it. <laughs> yeah. I Does forget, that sound familiar? Uh, I think so. Was it Stern or was it another license? Or I think, yeah, it must be Stern. I don't know. But like, anyway, those are the kind of... I don't know, know what some, it is. Yeah, some licensors are really strict with their IP, and others are kind of like, no, have fun. That's what we want. That's why we came to you. Yeah. you know, to we have want fun you to it. actually have your take on it, not not our clip art that we give you. Right. You know, interpret it. Um, obviously, with doing... Uh, with Zen doing their own ideas also, then you know, you're not constantly submitting your idea, waiting for feedback... And then reiterating it. Instead, it's literally taking your idea to the rest of the team, going, "What do you think?" The rest of the team going, "Yay!" And then you're running with it. So, it, I mean, there's exactly. also an efficiency to uh, to design on that front. Yeah. So um, and then it was interesting. Mel said that currently <laughs> they've got 18 theme ideas floating around, and he says, and, and I'm just laughing that this <laughs> Snoopy. Apparently, it leads their content team. Not the animated dog Snoopy, but that must be their nickname for somebody there. <laughs> okay, Snoopy, eh? Yeah, because he, he pointed out, he said, Snoopy, if you're watching, uh, he's the one that leads our content team. The, and then he was saying that there's where the 18 theme ideas um, that they've got currently running. It's interesting, that Curse of the Mummy theme, boy, if only they partnered with Universal. Uh-huh. And then you could the have... Thing. Movie footage from the Mummy movies. <laughs> yep, that's a. It seems to me like a missed opportunity. I mean, that's a good, well-known franchise. Yeah, uh, with a lot, a lot of story that they wouldn't have to make up. Yes, uh, or it could be hmm. literally like, although a lot of people thought that Williams's attack from Mars was basically Mars attacks. I don't think Williams ever actually approached Warner's about doing a no. license, but it was so license adjacent that basically Williams got away with it. <laughs> and and everyone calls it Mars Attacks, yeah, as well. Like they go, oh, I like the Mars Attacks table. Yeah, it's like, uh huh. Which I mean, as far as an original content thing, that's a good thing because you're getting a lot of free advertising. You're not have to pay any residuals to it. Mm hmm. It's a pretty good deal. So yeah. who knows? Maybe that was Zen's master plan. Maybe a lot of their ideas original ideas they have right now are uh, license adjacent. <laughs> license adjacent. Yeah, that's right. Riding the coattails. <laughs> yes. Okay, so speaking of licenses, um, this was... Okay, we're going to get into some speculation here, Jared. I don't have the image okay. up because it was like... You can so look quick. it up yourself. You can look it up yourself. Yeah. But every single mm -hmm. time you go to the pinball show, they've got that back wall of stuff. Oh, yeah. And the stuff has been changing and accumulating and, you know, whatever... And yeah. Mel kind of pointed behind and he goes, oh yeah, see, a lot of our friends here are in these games. And I kind of went, hmm, let's push pause. Yeah, what, what is on this what wall? What is on this yeah. wall? Now, apart from there being a lot of Marvel and Star Wars stuff, stuff. up there, here's some mm, things that yeah. I think I saw. 
I can swear I saw a Pikachu up there. <laughs> uh, oh. It was a little uh-huh. yellow mouse-like thing with big ears. I didn't see a tail. Um, Must and, be it, and it wasn't. It, it was. Uh, it wasn't like a real Pikachu. You know, it was obviously, uh, you know, a different mold or whatever. But I kind of went. Yeah. Uh, looks like a Pikachu. Uh, and wouldn't that be an interesting license? You think? <laughs> Come on, bowls. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, right. Uh-huh. Kind of yeah. natural. Uh, uh, collecting yeah. things. You know. Building up your your, I can just Pokemon see, collection? I can just yeah, I, I I can just see. It's kind of like what what's in um, Star Wars Epic Quest. No, Epic Quest, where mm. all the insert lights. You're collecting all the insert lights, which is classic pinball design, right? You want to yeah. light all the things. Um, yeah. Anyway, so I saw that. There's but an, also there's Star Wars an, collectibles. <laughs> all these little Pokemon figures around the play field that you're collecting. Yeah, I don't yes. want to talk about Star Wars collectibles. <laughs> but in the same, yes. in the same yes. vein, right? right? Right, That would um, work. There was an original NES controller up there. Ah, yeah, there was too. Again, hmm, interesting. Do we have a Nintendo mm, partnership mm, of mm, some mm, sort? Mm. Maybe. I mean, Maybe. the game is out on the Switch. I, you might see exclusive content for. I don't know. Just. That throwing that out there. there was what looked like a book that said the ultimate 80s quiz. Now, that just might be a cute piece of decoration. Yeah. But I'm thinking about Total Annihilation, which feels very much like an 80s table in every sense, like in the look and the style and the music. Oh, its aesthetic is, is synthwave. Right. Yeah. So 80s synthwave. Sure. That would be actually a pretty cool uh, uh, original idea for Zen 2 to go into. I wouldn't and mind that. easy enough now that they've got HD tech, yes, uh, display tech. Like uh, going after the spooky license uh, is a pretty interesting. That would make a lot of sense. Uh, yeah, again, there's not a lot of tables. They don't pump out a lot of tables, so keeping up with them wouldn't be terribly difficult. And I think it would only benefit spooky. To raise their uh, stature? Oh, it would mean that they... I mean, they're already selling out tables pretty much instantly when they put them out. Right. Um, so, but they're not But they're not producing a lot, right? They don't have that... They're not. They don't have that functionality. So there's still a lot of players that don't get to play their machines. That's right. They're hard to find. Like, there's only... The only reason why we see them in Australia is because Jimmy from... Netherworld is a bit of a fan of Spooky, <laughs> and yeah. he buys. We, we've apparently got a kaiju and a um, uh, Halloween table. So, well, and that's what I was just yeah. going to say. Kaiju, Asian market. What was that Mel talking about a while ago, and where they want to crack into? Asian markets. Yes. So, uh-huh. just kind of again, we're 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 just throwing ideas out here that don't be surprised if. This is where they don't goes. come to fruition. But come on, seriously, <laughs> spooky. Get yeah. into the boutique pinball manufacturers. Like mm-hmm. you, you have to think that engaging the smaller manufacturers will be easier than going after a Stern because yes. because of all the intellectual property and also the old thinking in Stern. Like with places like Spooky, they're going after really interesting left of field licenses that you know. Are very appealing to certain demographics. Yeah. So, you know, th- there's some there's some scope there for sure. Uh, last thing that I noticed on the uh, pin- the, the 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 pinball show the wall. wall, I saw a little tiny spinner that looked like the spinner that would be in Twister. I believe Twister might be owned by Hasbro. Oh, is really? Oh, as in Hasbro games. Oh, Hasbro, yeah, Twister, the board game. The, right. Yes, the, we all know that classic, you know, uh, party game, throw out the mat, everybody tape, you know, be in their socks and, you know, basically tie each other into, up into knots. Um, but yeah. if you think about it in terms of what that would look like on a pinball play field, uh, you would have four, because there's four different colors, there'd be yeah. four different colored targets all over the place, I imagine. Mm-hmm. And for hurry up purposes, it spins and says you have to hit this color and this color before you maybe have to hit any other color on the, the play field nor to score. I, it can work as a pinball machine and 
and again, in terms of insert lights, think Pinbot. Yep. The other, well, the other thing too is that I've, I, I've only recently got to bring home the third of the um, Gottlieb Star Series 80s tables yeah. that um, I had. I brought in because I've got space for it now. And it's timeline. And when I look at the play field of that, it's tic-tac-toe, essentially. Mm, okay, yeah. There's, there's, there's like a board game in the middle. And mm-hmm. you could very easily apply that mechanic to something like to Twister easily. Yeah. You know, so that's pretty cool as well. So I'm just... I just found it curious that the, and it was a mini spinner too. It was like a little tiny square, small one. So it wasn't like the full size one that would normally come in the game. But, and I could, sw- I could be wrong. It may not be a twister spinner at all. Um, again, it, it could just be. Take so, twister is owned by Hasbro, and so is My Little Pony, and you know, licensed adjacent maybe. I'm just saying, in terms of. You may not think that, that would be an interesting pinball, but I immediately start thinking of the possibilities. And it could if, be a really good entry level pinball too for sure. someone who doesn't know pinball. Oh, shoot the colors! Like, right. how easy can that be? Right. And if that wall is indeed being used as subtle hints, then I'm looking for subtle hints. <laughs> so, folks, mm. take a look at the video, the uh, episode eight. Look at that wall. Somebody else can do a much better job of identifying absolutely every character or, or toy that they have up on the wall. Uh, see if there's anything that sticks out, that stands out, that uh, makes you go, hmm. And please yeah. drop it in the comments. Let us know what you think, uh, mm, yeah, what sure. your ideas are. Yeah. Um, Mel talked a little bit about Zen Pinball Party. Says it is has been tops on Apple Arcade since launch. Says mm. the numbers show it's being played a lot, and it's garnering attention from licensors. It's basically one big license show, isn't it? Really? Yeah. One big ad for the ability of Zen to properly represent licensors' needs. And and he specifically mentioned the fact that you know having My Little Pony playing alongside DreamWorks properties, which and, is very interesting, right? Because it ta- makes me think in terms of when you're approaching licensors saying, look, it's not taking anything away being side by side with these other licenses. You don't it's need actually spotlight. bolstering their exposure. Right. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Because you're bringing in the same market of customer who might've come for one thing and then sticks around for the other. Yeah. It's very much, I think this is the, the thing that um, I think is apparent with this particular package the zen pinball party is that it is not focusing on the license saw which is what zen has typically done they've created like a you know we talked about it with zen pinball vr bespoke experience that really highlights the license source properties with this one what they're actually doing is they're flipping that narrative around and as you say they're focusing on the user demographic, yeah. not the licensors. The licensors are a means to an end to meet the user dem- demographic's need. And that is that is the way that you need to go if you're going to be increasing exposure for a platform. Which kind of goes into... Translate that oh, yeah. into FX, right? That is going to be the same medium. It's going to be a whole lot of different licensor properties in one common platform yep. that's designed to attract everyone to see your license which is what mel then said he said licenses that are coming are going to vastly diversify the content Mm -hmm. which means you're obviously really trying to bring in all different demographics of player um, and have them funneling into this thing so because the idea is it's going to be it's essentially fx is going to be like walking into an arcade yeah. Like there's a whole lot of different stuff in an arcade, right? There's not just, you know, a whole lot, a whole row of Star Wars machines. Yeah. Like if you're if you're using that, you know, analogy, right? There is, you know, a bit of Star Wars, bit of, you know, Marvel, bit of Williams, bit of, you know, Hasbro, you know. So having the different themes and different styles will mean that when you're walking down the row, the virtual row of pinball machines, you're gonna find something that resonates with you. And as you say, Chris, which is perfectly correct, you're going to start getting into that that part. It's like the gateway, right? And then you're going to start going, oh, what else is here? Yeah. Oh, 
oh, look, here's, here's you know, Universal. Oh, it's Kung Fu Panda. I know that. This is the way. <laughs> well, and it reminds me, way. I, I just downloaded a uh, an app. It's called BeatStar. And it's a rhythm Beat game. Star. It's a rhythm game app. Um, oh, yeah. I, as I've made no bones about it, I love me some Guitar Hero and Rock Band and DJ oh, yeah. Hero. Um, I don't play them hardly at all anymore, but it doesn't mean I don't like them. And it doesn't mean oh, that I don't occasionally bust out the guitar and be like, yeah, I remember how much fun this was. And I think about I've how much music... you afterwards. <laughs> okay. But I, it also... It exposed me to a lot of music that I normally would have been just like, I got no time for that. But because uh, you want to play everything... And then, you know, yeah, some of them you're still like, oh, that Chris song is crap. And other times you're like, ah, oh, damn it, now I got this thing stuck in my head and it's not too bad. I'm kind of like, okay, fine. It's not horrible. I'm yeah, grudgingly right. liking this, you know. So anyway, this BeatStar app is similar in that, in that you there's a whole host of music that you're playing with your thumbs. It's addictive that way, and that's all cool. It has got the absolute worst energy system. It's like... Think about mobile games three or four years ago mm-hmm. um, where it was just like every single time you just start getting into it, it's, oh, you have to stop playing and I'll wait three hours. Oh, what? Yeah, it's it's that kind of nonsense. Or if you don't want to wait, oh. well, hey, pay this many you know dollars to, you know, it's for all theories. these jewels. Yes, yeah, so it... For anybody that thought that the Williams app had Smurf berries, no, this is Smurf Berry Central. This is all the Smurf berries and all the different stuff. To the point that I've gotten, so you have to earn stars in order to advance uh, uh, okay. up this progress chart. And when you get to certain stars, then it opens up and it'll give you new songs, stuff like that, right? Right. I'm to the point where. I've got four stars on a host of songs. Mm-hmm. I need to five star every single one of them to get me to the next chest, basically, that'll open up a new song. I'm only at level five. There's like 13 levels. How the Jeez. hell am I going to get beyond that? Because it used to be, oh, earn five stars and you would get a new thing. Now it's earn 25 stars and get a new thing. And it only gets oh. more and more as you climb the ladder. So I'm literally going, I'm hitting the wall any day now. Just it's like, for you bam, to open hard. Wallet, Chris. Right? That's what they want you to do. I they know. And, I'm, and, wallet. and they don't know me. You're going, I no, don't, they don't. Hey, I don't play that us. way. <laughs> <laughs> you, don't, you don't spend any money on, no, on mobile never. games at all. But no. my whole point of what I was thinking was, though, is there's a whole bunch of songs in here I would never, ever give the time of day. Mm-hmm. And yet I'm sitting here spending all of my energy bars trying to master this one song, therefore hearing it five, six, seven times in a row. Uh-huh. Th- that's, Having it sticking that's, in your that's, head? That's good marketing, folks. <laughs> it's, that's or, really good marketing. As, as far as a license, uh, a licensor is concerned, that's, yeah, right? So that's I imagine money that right that, there. Right. So yeah. I imagine that's the same thing that's happening with Zen Pinball Party, is Zen, mm. you know, sans uh, the, the paywall, other than the monthly uh, Apple Arcade fee, but yeah. it's that same point of, hey, look, we're exposing your product to all of our customers, and we've got the yeah. numbers right now showing we've got a lot of customers. Therefore, more eyeballs are going to be put on yours. So rather than being, oh, no, I want an exclusive and, you know, stand out on my own. Stand alone app, yeah. No. Yeah, no, jump in. Because uh, here's the other thing too, right? The While it's, you know, interesting to have a, you know, different brands in one product, often what happens, or like, think about this, like you go into an arcade, we'll use the arcade analogy yeah. again. You go in, you play a stern pinball, you go and play a, JC Jack Pinball, you go and play Williams Pinball. Each one of those pinball manufacturers has a different way of doing things. The way that the experience will be on each of those games will differ. But the thing is with this Zen Pinball Party app, the overall quality and polish is consistent with the brand. It's just the actual brand that gets to shine and be the differentiator between what's going on. So again, that's even better because it's not so much your brand is competing. It's on a level playing field with all the other um, 
all the other tables, what's essentially doing is it's just, it's there and it's waiting to attract that demographic in with a similar experience. Yeah. So that's the other thing too, which is different um, and good with this particular offering. So the last thing that uh, Mel basically uh, hinted at, and he's kind of mentioned it to us before too, uh, but it's nice to hear it being reiterated. Uh, mm. The goal is to have a table a month. Yep. Which sounds to me like less about table packs and yeah, more just singular. A single release. Right. Which, I mean, obviously that worked for Farsight, so I, I don't see that as being an issue. Um, obviously it'll make no. it feel like the release schedule is, uh, less weight and that'll maybe have people piping down, uh, <laughs> in the complaint department. No, probably not as well. Like they'll be then <laughs> expecting, you know, a release a month. And if they slip a couple of weeks, then it'll be all hell to pay. You know, but of course, if they do month. a release a month, and again, I'm thinking about all the licensed Williams tables, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Um, because then your fe- then you are doing the featuring of one particular one, giving it the, its proper spotlight, and then just throwing it in the mix with everything else. So yeah, um, that's right. That was that was it. So that that was essentially everything that Mel stated um, in that episode. So we're we're doing our best to try and get Mel to come on. We don't know when uh, makes sense. Uh, we'd. We were thinking, obviously, if this was like a December release, that we would have him on soon. Um, now it's a question of, well, does he just want to come on and talk, or does he got anything else to pitch? We don't know, because obviously yeah, all the know. announcements are going to, uh, you know, the 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 pinball show. Yeah, that's right. They have their own vehicle now, but yeah. you know, it doesn't mean that we can, um, we don't, we can't get him on and take a different stance, which we right. always do. Our interviews are very different to the pinball show's content. Yes. It's By the way, platform. speaking of the pinball show. Mm-hmm. It did seem that uh, Bobby and Rose were not on prompter this time. Yeah, it seemed. Yay! It was definitely more natural. Hey? Yeah, Rose, and Rose I, felt a yeah. lot more natural this time. Uh, yeah, Bobby still looked like he wanted the safety net, but he was trying. <laughs> yeah, he was like he's giving it a good go, and but I think I think they might have taken some notes from everybody, not just <laughs> us, but from everybody. Yeah, that. They just need to loosen up a bit where it makes sense to do so. Obviously, they can't loosen up when they're talking about a license. They have to be on script right. for that. But, like, you know... But they, it's not they going out live. Blooper, right? They do have an edit button. Yeah, they do. Yeah. <laughs> and they, they can, you know... It, it might just mean that it takes a couple more takes, but, yeah, you know, as long as it feels a bit more natural, that's good. I mean, they included a bit of a, a blooper in this episode. Yes. You know, and that was good. Like, it just keeps it a little bit less robotic. Yeah. and more natural. So good on you guys. Keep yeah. this up. This is much better. Much better. Yeah, the the, the blooper was uh, to, to introduce uh, Akash's little section. So. Yeah. I liked it. it. It was good. It felt natural. Yes. It was good. Uh, can, can I make you jealous, Jared? Sure. Oh, I, you got one. I have the beer, folks. Uh, is it good? I, I, I don't drink beer. <laughs> oh, come on. <laughs> So what are you going to do with it? Just leave it there? In the well, I, I might have to have my wife uh, uh, sample it because she would actually enjoy a, a beer. I don't. Um, but collectible cans, folks. Uh, Pinball-themed. Uh, yeah, uh, Echo sh- had this sent over to me. He couldn't send it to you because they only ship to the U.S. right now, as far as I know. Cor- correct. Yes. Yeah, they, um, we, we can't export beer. In fact, you know, on that subject very quickly... Exports from the U.S. are screwed at the moment. <laughs> As I found out when I did my pinball resource order, oh. um, most of the USPS um, economy options are screwed now. And because of COVID, they're not offering them. So for me to get my parts from pinball resource now, I have to pay an extra 30 or 40 US dollars Ooh. for a super priority USPS, you know, red <sighs> carpet experience rolled that out. sucks. It really does, and um, so, and it's it's because of COVID, and yeah. they're obviously having problems with deliveries over there and logistics. So, to to counteract that, they're making it really expensive to export to yeah. help people not export. Yeah, because it's too expensive. Yeah, um, but I need these parts. I can't get them from anywhere else. Right. I have to order them. 
So yeah. So anyway, Akosh had this uh, sent over to me. So dude, thank you. We love Akosh. Um, <laughs> we love Akosh. He's uh, a good guy. But yeah, so this is pretty good. Cool. I, I just had a box arrive, and it had a six pack of these. And I'll just bring this up right here. Here's the website, folks, uh, if you're interested. Rivalrybrews.com. Right. Um, and it's 45 bucks for the six-pack. So it's, it's a little uh, little on the pricey $45 so. for a six-pack? Well, we're talking craft beer here. Um, a very limited run. It comes from yeah. uh, Birdfish <laughs> Brewing. Now you know why I'm not cracking it open, Jared. Um, <laughs> Sell on the black market. Uh, for, here we go. It's a classic unfiltered German wheat beer that brings through ripe banana esters with a hint of pear. 5.4% mm. alcohol, which I had to laugh because on the uh, the pop bumpers, uh, you can barely see it. They all say 5.4%. <laughs> That's cool. So, yeah. Um, Anyway, this is where you'd want to go, though, if you want to uh, order up. You have to uh, act quick. Uh, beer is being shipped and delivered the week of October 15th. Right. So you better so order before then. Get on it. <laughs> if, you're, if you're interested at all in getting some of this. But uh, I don't know. I kind, of, I kind of like this, you know, just I, I imagine that uh, if I had a lower shelf, you know, I have a whole bunch of these uh, pinball beers up there. Now That's cool. Within the box, though. It's expensive, though, for a craft beer. It is. It is. My, oh, my. (laughs) And you might be thinking again, and they mentioned it in there, why license with a beer? Uh, Well, what did our podcast start out being called? Barcade. Barcade. Um, Because it was, you know, the vast majority of the eight people that were on here were all talking about how they like to get their drink on while playing pinball. Because um, that is the way to play pinball. So when you have inside the uh, the box that came, though, there was other goodies. What's in the box? What's in the box? So <laughs> so they gave me a beer cozy. All right, cool. With the little uh, their logo on there. Um, yeah. They gave me a hacky sack. A Woo! hacky sack. Yeah, birdfish. Uh, for birdfish nice. brewing. Um, they gave me the world's cheapest pair of sunglasses <laughs> hey <laughs> these things are like these aren't even dollar store <laughs> yeah. it's, it's, um, they are purely a marketing thing that yes marketing thing we have where when they're out and sticker that looks like a almost like a 3d it one. does it's it got does. like the blue and and then perhaps what I, at first i went what in the world is this and then i realized what it was and i was like okay cool so all right show it to me okay so what here is this is this little thing it says Two hip. Now, here's what threw oh, me. Oh, I know what it is. I know what it is. Okay. It's a coin dispenser. Yeah. The two hip. This is from a local radio station called KLOS. They were a classic oh, rock yeah. station. And back yeah. in the day, they had these exact stickers that had two hip on them. And so I was like, what in the world are they doing with that? And I was like, what is that? But yes, it is indeed a quarter coin dispenser. So you put your quarters in there and you pull your quarter out and then it, it's a spring-loaded uh, you see, contraption. Uh, I reckon, I was just thinking about this the other day for Netherworld. They need those. Because at the moment with Netherworld, when you buy like a bag of dollar coins mm-hmm. over the bar, um, they give it to you in a little Netherworld baggie. Yeah. Um, it's a little zip, you know, zip lockable plastic mm-hmm. bag. Um, when certain times during the year, you can buy like the the show bag. And the show bag will often have a cloth version of that baggie in it, like a little tote drawstring yeah but they need they need token dispensers like yeah. that with netherworld on it i don't know why they haven't done it yet i would buy one in a heartbeat because i i get tokens all the time well and that's and I that's where i was like stoked i was like you know what because they this particular brewery apparently has pinball machines at their brewery so it's As nice should. it's nice to know that they actually recognize who the customer is for this uh-huh and you know, whereas the sunglasses, I was like, "What?" But this, I was like, "Cool!" <laughs> so, oh yeah, I would um, totally be using that. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna have to have a chat to Jimmy and Ben and yeah. say, "Guys, you need to do coin dispensers, please." Uh, yeah. So anyway, those. again, uh, rivalrybrews.com. I know we're not doing paid advertisements, uh, but I felt that the need to actually. Give Let a you shout guys out for sure. give a shout out and have you guys jump on this again if you want these order now, um, yeah. because You've like I said, got to get in. Says it's shipping October fifteenth. Um, yep. So, if you want that uh, unique pinball collectible, though, I mean, 
come on, how many, how many, oh, I don't know. Have you? I don't know how many home arcades you've been to, but whenever I've been to any of these houses where people have a whole bunch of pinball machines, this is exactly the sort of thing that they have up on their shelves. Just weird oh, yeah. pinball-related knickknacks. So. Yep. Yeah, pinball curios. That's what we call it. Ah, that's a good one. All right. Yeah. Um, I kind of feel that that's that's all we have for today, Jared. I think I think it kind of is. Let me kinda just stop wipe my screen. Okay, yeah. You, you, there we are. There you, we go. You, you were a little moss covered there. I was uh, a little bit moss covered. I was a bit green. <laughs> yeah. Um, green with envy. Oh. Uh, oh. <laughs> I am. I am jealous that you got that swag pack. I know. Oh, when my. when when Aiko uh, was asking for my address. I was like, oh, I'm going to make Jared jealous. I'm going to show this on mm. the show. And he was like, yeah, Number do Number one, you got beer. Like, <laughs> come on. Like, I'm Australian. Uh, beer is a thing here, right? Right. Um, and we have a pretty active we have a pretty active um, craft brewery scene here in Australia. In fact, it's actually overtaking commercial beer oh, wow. here in Australia. Yeah, it's huge. It's a huge industry here. Um, no, no, they're, they're knocking on 4X's door? Poor. <laughs> Forex. <laughs> Don't even get me started. Forex. There's a reason. You know what other four letter word is? It's four X's. <laughs> There's a couple, and they all relate to the flavor of that beer. Is, am, uh, am I not? Am I not mistaken though? Forex. That's kind of the official beer of uh, your territory. Uh, it is the large production run beer of Queensland. Yes. Yeah. It is. It is served in pubs everywhere. I mean, at um, least I didn't say Fosters. No, Foster's is only export. No exactly. That stuff. Exactly. That's why I'm saying. <laughs> Forex is definitely the Queensland beer. It's the it's the one where it's it's commonly available pretty much in every bar you go to, but it's being pushed out by all these crafties mm. coming in. Okay. And um, you're getting more craft on there than you are like nationally produced beers now. Mm -hmm. That's a good thing. Yeah. I'd be happy to see no Forex product on a <laughs> um on a tap in a in a bar near me. Well, I'll, I'll know, mention funny. that on this website, this isn't the only beer that's there. There is a buttload of craft beers. Apparently they've partnered with oh, a yeah. whole bunch of breweries. So they're basically acting as a distributor, I'm sure. This rivalry is to all the you know, small breweries that are around. Yeah. It's um, it's very common that yeah. um you have like a network um where you know you can get a whole lot of craft beers through. Um, I mean, you can go to bottle shops here, or you know, off licenses, where you call it over there, liquor yeah. liquor stores, and and get any number of off the shelf um, craft beers. Now, like it, they're easy to come by, which okay. is good because they're delicious. Um, mm. So yeah, you know, I'm sexy. I noticed that you're wearing your Star Wars shirt there, yes. Chris. I'm still I'm still waiting for my stuff from Zen. Um, from when I won from that token submission for um, it, you know, it took a, a while fan. for mine to arrive too. So yeah, it's all right. I, I'm I, I I can't even remember when I won that. It was like episode three or four. Yeah, uh, I think so. It was it feels like a while ago, but anyhow, anyhow. All and, right, and you know, having said that, you know, it's so hard to get stuff out of the US at the moment right? from postal service. I, I I have a feeling I understand why. <laughs> um, hey, just before you go, you know how yeah. you were talking about. Um, the uh, music games yes. um, before. So uh, people who are fans of the drumming simulation game Drum Mania will mm -hmm. know that you can install this thing called DTX Mania on your PC, connect a Yamaha or any MIDI-based USB drum kit, and you can actually play a whole lot of Drum Mania songs on your drum kit, um, your physical drum kit. So what's happened since then is... Uh, Bimani or Konami and the Bimani range of rhythm action games, they've realized that, hang on a second, we could probably sell this and make some money. Uh, so over in Japan, they've actually got a monthly subscription service that you can subscribe to that gives you access to like Beat Mania, Drum Mania, Guitar Freaks, um, or Gitadora as they call it. Um, and you can do that over there. But the other thing is that on VR, they've got this new rhythm action game, which is wild. It's drumming, it's guitar, it's keyboard, uh, it's the whole band. And it actually uses your hand detection okay. in Oculus 
to actually work out where your hands are and actually you can play keyboard without a keyboard at all virtually and guitar is air guitar it can actually track your hand position interesting like where you're actually playing and drums is completely air drums so okay you've got symbols coming down just like you do in all these rhythm action games and you're like hitting virtual pads now i've played a version of this virtual pad drumming thing um uh it was a uh an oculus um uh, app app lab game um with virtual virtual pads coming down and i thought initially that's gonna be a really bad experience you need something to whack but it kind of works virtually because your controller buzzes whenever you hit the note in time so you get this haptic feedback and it and you you see the drumstick like in real time like going towards the pad so you can get the timing right and i'm really interested to try this game so what's it called uh, it is. I'm just let me get my phone and look at my Oculus wish list because um, it's it's only just recently been released. Actually, it's uh, pretty new and shiny. Uh, oh, for Oculus. Uh, here it is. And go to my wish list. Uh, here. Store. Where is the wish list in Oculus? This is the real question. <laughs> I don't. I actually don't know where exactly this is um, in the Oculus Store. Let me go to my settings. That's where it is. Um, my library. It'd be much easier if I had the uh, um, headset on because the wish list is very prevalent in gotcha. the the game. But it's a it's a lot easier there. Um, uh, this is scintillating. I was going to say this is called Stump Jared. Uh, yeah, this is totally so. <laughs> this is a good example of what's wrong with the Oculus interface that I can't actually find. Um, uh, it's like, yeah, I can't tell you what it is at the moment. A oh, wish list. There you go. I found it. Um, it's called. Uh... Oh, come on, load. <laughs> <laughs> it is. Um, here's my wish list on the app, um, and it's loading. And it's loading. <laughs> it's still <laughs> loading. Um, so um, let me just do a f- full refresh and see if it comes up. Um, but if you go, it, it's one of the ones that was actually featured on the store. If you go there and you do a search for like drum mania or, or um, guitar, it will come up as one of the first results. This is not working. So abandon all hope. Um, all right. The app isn't doing what it needs to do. Um, but either way, you can go there and, and check it out. Um, and it's it's made by Konami themselves. Um, I'll do a quick search here. Games. I'll just, I'll just state this, folks, uh, real quick. I had watched a video on YouTube. Uh, one of these guys that has basically Beach dedicated... Arena is what it's called. Was it? Beat Arena. Okay. Beat Arena. Yeah. Um, Beat Arena. He's one of these guys that has been uh, an avid VR headset uh, YouTuber. Uh, has been paying attention to VR for the past five years and doing stuff. He came across a VR headset that he says absolutely bl- you know, made his jaw hit the floor. Um, it's by a company called Vario. V-A-R-J-O, I believe. But oh, yeah. <laughs> check this out. Resolution per yeah. eye. 2880 by 2720. <laughs> oh, that's high. Um, There's no that's, screen door there. And, 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 and that's only two of the screens. There's four total. The other two screens are your 1980 by 1080, but they're uh, Super OLED or something like that. Anyway, yeah. and... So playing tricks with your peripheral, it's got uh, uh, LiDAR cameras on the front. Mm. He says it literally is like like you're not wearing a headset. For yeah. AR-type experiences, he says you there becomes this merging of, wait, what's real and what is fake? That's in front of me, kind of thing. Yeah. But check out the price tag. The price tag. <laughs> oh my god. This is clearly designed for not consumers, but for like mm. medical professionals or uh, designers, yes. automobile designers, and stuff like that. 
Uh, mm. I believe it was $6,500 just for the headset, and then yeah. it's a $1,500 a year subscription. <laughs> wow, $1,500 a year. <laughs> yeah. Bargain. That's fine. That's, that's fine. Right, that's fine. But what he was saying was they lent it to him for a month. He called over a bunch of uh, game designers that he knows mm. that, that work in VR. They threw the thing on, and they were like, I've never seen my game look like this. Mm-hmm. <laughs> they were just like, I'm, st- I'm stunned. I'm staggered. This is yeah. what my game looks like. you know. Yeah. And he said also it's the first time he's ever found a headset where he's gone, you know what? I don't need a monitor. I could do this in yeah. virtual space with as many monitors around the room as I wanted to, and it will feel completely natural because it is absolutely dead to nuts crisp on oh, yeah. everything. <laughs> I actually saw this other headset as well, which is which is interesting, and where and it could be a similar tech where they've got like essentially a, a regular resolution screen around your field of vision, but in your focal point. Yes, that's what this is. Got, yeah, high resolution, yes. right? Really high. Yeah, and and uh, I think it was the guy on VR Oasis, Mike from VR Oasis, who I follow on YouTube. Um, he tested it out, and he said it's like playing something like. Um, uh, uh, what is it? Uh, Half Life Alex. Yeah. On on it, he said it's just. Whoa, it's well, because he was saying it basically it tracks your eyes, and that's yeah. where it, it, you know, changes or upreses that you know particular thing to. So you're constantly getting the best image wherever your eye focus is yeah, going. It's incredible. Um, but in terms of, <laughs> the thing takes two power bricks to power. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. This big old cable running down. It was interesting. He had this whole clip system on his legs, mm. so that the cable wasn't just like you know weighing on his head or whatever. He loved the the the, the, the halo. The that halo. Was with yeah. Him. So it was the most comfortable halo he'd ever had. Um, but this is also a dude that has you know one of these spaces that's twenty by twenty, so that you can do full walking. Oh, around. room scale. Yeah. yeah right. Yeah. So, yeah. It's uh, wild. Anyway, hey, there's another thing too on another thing just to close out the show on VR. Um, <laughs> YouTube is... dump on uh, Pinball Blockade. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> so uh, the uh, there's been some reports floating around on a number of different games on Oculus that are using the cloud backup system. Um, now, what's happened there is that Oculus is allegedly upgrading the system doing something to it and it's made all these games unbootable including star wars pinball vr um now what zen have done to work around this problem is they've turned off cloud saving but that means that if you uninstall the game during the period when cloud saving is off all your local progress is lost um so this is also a problem on tetris effects tetris effects rebrand themselves as like tetris expanded or something like that and they they had this whole plan for online multiplayer and i was really stoked for it it sounds really great and then they pretty much had to turn it all off because of this cloud save issue and now a whole section of the game doesn't work uh so i don't know what oculus is playing at here but it seems really stupid to cripple the cloud save system that every developer relies on and then Make it so that when your game boots, you can't boot it unless you get a connection to Cloud Save. Mm. That seems really dumb. So I hope that they're pretty fast spinning up their new servers or whatever they need to do to upgrade this service because that's a pretty bad experience for for VR gamers on yeah. Oculus. Wow. So All right. there you go. Okay, folks. Well, I hope you've had your fill. We've had our fill. Uh, as usual, we started we're, early and we're finishing around the regular time. Right? Yeah. <laughs> uh, we've so, been doing some yeah, long is... shows these last three shows. I don't know what's going on here, but um, uh, th- it's like the old days. <laughs> yeah, it is. Yeah, <laughs> there we was, might there start was a... using that uh, at that YouTube episode. That's uh, the chapter feature. There was there was no no too bad. You people just have to scrub. Uh, <laughs> um, <laughs> or wait until I do the show notes, and then you yeah, have time. Yeah, there there was a time when we we were like, you know what, our episodes are going way too long. We need to pare these down to like forty five minutes. And mm. I think we lasted about three episodes of that before we went. Yeah, we never, we could never maintain no, a forty five minute episode ever. No. Um, but then again, there was somebody that I follow on YouTube that I just saw did a five hour stream. Uh, so I don't feel bad. <laughs> no, we're fine. 
we're free, free and clear with we're that. Fine. Um, <laughs> hey, folks, you want to communicate with us? Easy way of doing that. Boom, right there. Look at the Twitter handles. There's Jared's Twitter handle. There's the show's Twitter handle. You look the wrong way, Jared. There you go. <laughs> um, yeah. it, it's always opposite. Uh, yeah. Feel free to drop us notes there. Yes. <laughs> um, you can also hit us. Uh, check us out on blockadepinball.com, where I am more than sure that there is an email address there that goes by the name of blah blah blockade at gmail.com. You can drop us notes there if you would so like. Or hey, if you happen to be watching this live on YouTube when I usually premiere it the on Sundays at uh, 9.30 a.m. Uh, Pacific time. I was going to say Pacific Daylight, but I don't know how much longer that's lasting. Um, mm. Anyway, 9.30 in the morning uh, on Sundays, I do this uh, premiere of the show live for you guys so that uh, I'm always in the chat, uh, and you guys can make your comments there because sometimes I ate notes, and then that's what winds up in the next show. So Yeah, that's right. Lots of ways to communicate with us. We totally appreciate it. Uh, that you take the time to, uh, uh, you know, watch our little dog and pony show because we enjoy doing it. We do. And, it's uh, a lot of fun. Yeah, it is. So thank you to everybody that uh, subscribes and watches. Next time, Jared. Some stuff and things to talk about. Don't know what yet, but stuff and things. Stuff and things. All right. Mm. Until then, bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>